YouTubers, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to from the Hot Lead Zone, and this video is for Gun Nut, because what's happening is Gun Nut's a new caster, and he's having some real bad leading problems with his 9mm shooting 124 grain truncated cone bullets, and he's getting leading in his barrel, leading that's more toward the muzzle, but probably some leading near the chamber also. So this video is all about leading. Now bad barrel leading will take the joy out of shooting, out of reloading, out of bullet casting. We cannot have leading in our systems. Now this of course is not a 9mm. It happens to be a Smith & Wesson 629. But everything that we talk about in revolvers applies to auto pistols. But we talk about all the pistols, it doesn't apply all the way back to revolvers. So we talk about letting and revolvers, it'll cover auto pistols also. So let's start with the revolvers. Now first of all, no one can say they don't get letting with cast bullets. Because we all get some letting. The trick is to keep our letting to the point where normal cleaning procedures will take care of all the problems, leaving us all the fun and joy of shooting, reloading, and bullet casting. Now the first principle of leading prevention is to have bullets that are fitted to the gun. So in revolvers, no need to slug the barrel because the important thing is the chamber throats on the other side of the cylinder. You can call them cylinder throats or chamber throats, whatever you want to call them. It's the hole on the front of the cylinder where the bullet comes out. What you want to do there is to mic that dimension and then have your bullets fitted to be 0.001 inch over that measurement. Now if you're 0.002 that's fine but you cannot have bullets that are smaller than the opening out here. If you have bullets that are smaller than the opening you'll get a lot of leading. We'll get into that in a little while. So YouTubers, what you do is get your micrometer caliper and just measure this opening. And do that for all six chambers. You want to make sure your bullets are 0.001 to 0.002 over that measurement. Takes you about five minutes to do. Total. Now here's what happens. When your round goes off, the cartridge case expands to grip the chamber and releases the bullet. But as soon as that happens, some of the gases blow by the bullet and will leave leading right here in the front part of your cylinder. Now that won't be a lot of leading, but you'll get a little bit there. And as more shots are fired, you'll just get to the leading, but some will blow out through the hot gases that are going through there so you don't get excessive lead. Now if you're shooting specials in a 44 Magnum or if you're shooting 38 specials in a 357 Magnum what happens is the case is shorter in there and so there's more room to, to deposit some fouling or light leading and if you don't clean that out when you put Magnums in there they won't chamber as smoothly. Well, all the leading that we get in the cylinder is easily re removed by using a brush in a rod that's chucked in an electric drill. And all we got to do is run that in there, run the drill, and it's joy to remove that. You do that about 10 seconds per cylinder, and it's cleaner than a whistle in there. So that's easy to clean. We don't worry about that. Now, here's what happens. Your bullet comes out the front of the cylinder and it, it, if the bullet is properly dimensioned it will swedge and squeeze down about 0.001 to 0.002 to get through that that opening and when it does it's perfectly sealed. Now the bullet enters the forcing cone but it's still in the cylinder so the gases are being sealed the whole time the bullet is entering the barrel. If your bullet's too small for the chamber throat opening in the cylinder, the gases will blow by the bullet as it's in this critical junction right here. The gases are blowing by and depositing lead 
into the forcing cone and the first inch of the barrel. So if you look in your barrel and you see that there's lead depositing in the forcing cone or in the first inch, you know the problem is because your bullets are too small. And you need to go ahead and make your bullets .001 larger. So the fit of the bullet to this opening is critical. If it's fitted properly, .001, .002 larger than the cylinder throat, the leading will not be a problem in this area. And just normal cleaning will take care of it. Now what the forcing cone does is it accepts the bullet from the cylinder and then as it goes into the forcing cone, it gets swedged on a little bit more. So by the time the bullet exits the cylinder, the bullet is already engraved and sealed in the barrel. So when the bullet exits the cylinder, then those hot gases are now trying to blow by the bullet, but it can't do it. And so all those gases then will do two things, drives the bullet down the barrel and also some of the pressure blows out the cylinder gap. But no letting will occur. Now, if in this juncture, when the bullet clears the front of the cylinder, if the barrel is too large inside here, and that doesn't happen with revolvers, but if you get a perverse one, if there's if the bullet's too small as it's going in here, the, the gases will blow by the bullet and will deposit lead in the middle of your barrel. So if you see leading in the middle of your barrel, it could be because you got a perverse barrel that doesn't quite swedge down the bullet to seal as the bullet's exiting the cylinder. Now finally, if you're getting leading out near the muzzle, it's because your lube is running out and it's a lube problem. Well, with the 45 45 10 system, that doesn't happen. Well, you get a little lead out there, but it doesn't matter because when you just do normal cleaning with a brass brush or a boar snake, uh, ballastol or whatever your favorite solvent is, it just takes care of that without a lot of strokes. Maybe you go through there about maybe 6, 10, 12 strokes back and forth. So Gun Nut was using Johnson's Pace Wax to tumble lube his bullets and probably in the automatic pistol you're getting around a thousand feet per second or more and what's happening is the Johnson's Pace Wax is not enough to take care of that back end of the barrel or the front end of the barrel and so the lead's depositing near the muzzle. Switch to the 45 45 10 system and that should really help. Now the proper fit of the bullet in the barrel for an auto pistol is that for auto pistol barrels you have to slug the barrel, drive a soft lead slug through the barrel and then measure the widest part which is the groove diameter and you want your bullets to be .001 over that because as your bullet's sitting in the chamber here, when the round fires, if the bullet is too small to engrave into the barrel, then the gases blow by and you'll, you'll get a lot of leading in your barrel in the first half of your barrel. Now once again, if you get lead in the, in the front half of your barrel, it's because of the lube problem. So bullet fit is the first lead prevention policy. Now the second most critical feature in both revolvers and auto pistols for leading prevention is the hardness of the bullet needs to be matched to the velocity that you're using. And that one needs a special video all by itself talking about lead hardness. Otherwise this video is too long. Now the third most, most critical feature in leading prevention is the lube. Now you don't need to have lots of lube filling the grease grooves. That's not necessary anymore. It used to be thought that you needed to fill the grooves completely, but that's over lubing the bullet. Now YouTubers, both these systems work. This is the traditional bullet sizing in a sizer lubricator where the bullet passes through a die that squeezes it down to a certain diameter that we want to fit the gun and then it puts the lube into the grease groove and notice how much lube is in this grease groove that's actually a lot more than is necessary but this is, is a traditional system that's worked for many 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 years to prevent leading. The latest is the 
454510 system, which works very well because what you have there are a lot of little grooves. The 454510 is actually sitting in there, and that's all a lube you need going down the barrel. Now, what also helps is the front nose of the bullet is also coated by 454510, and as the bullet's going down the barrel and it's spinning at supersonic speed, what happens is all of that lube flies off and gets on the barrel in front of the bullet, and that works very well too. So this doesn't lead. The lube will work very well all the way through your barrel. Nut. What you have here is not just plain Johnson's paste wax, but you also have 45% allox in there beside the Johnson paste wax, and that gives you a better quality of lube to do the job if you're shooting bullets at a little bit higher speed, such as your 9mm. Now with the Johnson's paste wax, if you're shooting some cowboy loads or low standard loads, that's fine. But if you start pushing a thousand feet per second, you need the extra protection of the 45% allox in the 45-45-10 system. So gun nut, give that a try. Occasionally, shooters will get a little bit of lead in the forcing cone of our fine revolvers. So what's a shooter supposed to do when you get that happening and normal cleaning is done and you still see some lead right in here? Well, easy to take care of, get yourself a brass brush that's smaller diameter than the barrel and then go ahead and coat that or wrap that sub diameter brush with copper mesh that's sold either by Midway USA or easily purchased as chore boy copper mesh that you can buy at the store. Wrap that around your brush. Run that back and forth there a few times, say about 6 times, 12 times, and that leading will come out. Another way to do it is get some lead remover cloth from Midway USA and wrap a sub-diameter brass brush with a lead remover cloth, little strips of that, and then run that in there and go back and forth maybe about 20 times, just back and forth, back and forth, and that lead remover cloth will turn black because it's removing the lead. And that will get that lead out. So it doesn't take a lot to clean that out if we don't get anything major. Only minor leading from our systems, and that's not really a big chore to take care of. And if we control the leading, then we'll have the fun and joy of shooting our guns. And a final tip that we can all use is the last that we do at the range is to put some jacketed rounds through our gun. And if we do that, a lot of the lead will be blown out and your cleaning will be a lot easier. So that's good because it's not a bad idea to shoot a few magnums or jacketed bullets at the end of the range session anyway. So, gun nut, get the lead out and YouTubers out there, take care. Bye for now.